Enter. How can I be of assistance? You can begin by removing yourself from the Van Houten case. And then turning over her medical records to Dr. Abel. In the nine years that you've been experimenting on living, feeling brains, 17 of your patients have been irreversibly warped. Hi, right, everybody. Welcome to Movie Strange. I got my friend Uncle Al and Drew, and we're here to talk about cult Howdy. films. Everybody knows I'm cult curious. They're the cult experts. Here are the four, eight words. I always do that. Here are the eight words from last week. There they are. Beauties. Beautiful words. Bike, biker, racism, lodge, seduction, sequel, asylum, libido, and hypothalamus. And this is That's the one right. I picked. And of course... This is an Uncle Al joint, so it's it absolutely batshit crazy. Al, tell us the movie that you forced down my throat. You, oh, you picked Dr. Caligari from 1989. This yeah, this laser up. disc is like 31 years old at this point. It is. Did you have wow. you played that you laser go. disc yet? I did. It is relatively rot free, so I'm excited. Okay. First question: Great. Is yes, this sir. a direct sequel to the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari? I would say no. Oh. The, there, there's only like a very loose association with the, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Uh, one would be the fact that it takes, they both take place in an asylum. <laughs> there is a, a character called Dr. Caligari, and there is a, another character called uh, Cesare. I think that's how you say that. Okay. Uh, that sounds right. Yeah. That, that they both appear. And that and, okay. Let's that. uh before we go any let's just show the trailer. Maybe that'll clear a couple of things up and then you can you can just pontificate all you want because I don't get this film. Okay? Here we go. <laughs> okay. Every so often there comes a movie so sick, so twisted, so incredibly insane, the critics shout, Oscar calling, Oscar calling. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Unending torment. Meet Dr. Caligari. She's chic. She's hip. She's morally reprehensible. She's evil. She's a flat-out sadist. A sex Nazi. How do I make you feel? My feelings are like filthy prayers. I'm a juice dog. I'm a twitching ski ball. And you won't let me shiver. Bon appetit. She's the granddaughter of the infamous Dr. Caligari. To her, your brain's an open house. You've got to learn to just say yes. The critics cheered when Dr. Caligari took the midnight movie circuit by storm. Perhaps I should prescribe a sedative for you. This movie screams art. I got an EKG you can dance to. Everybody limbo. The LA Times stamped its approval. Consistently outrageous and imaginative. I call it disgusting. I'm on a radiation vacation soaking up the gammas. Funny thing about desire. If it's not crude, it's not pure. On college campuses, she's the new homecoming queen. She's got style. She's got class. She's got people talking everywhere. Excitement's the essence of life. When it's over, you're dead. She's racy, irreverent, and radical. Dr. Caligari. The twisted passions of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The all-consuming hunger of eating Raul. And the outrageous excess of pink flamingos. Describe your life in three words or less. She's the surrealistic psychiatrist with the totally camp couch. Dr. Caligari. She's got the cure for midnight madness. Surprise! Oh, you're gonna savor this. Okay, explain away, please. <laughs> What's there to explain? <laughs> you saw everything you needed to see right there. That's you actually a that. good trailer, yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Explain it. Because okay, it seems so, to me, uh, wait, can I just, it seems to me yeah. that if, and I don't do this, and I think maybe it would have made the experience a lot better, to take an edible or smoke some weed before you watch this thing. <laughs> because I mean, you, you certainly can engage in that behavior, and I'm sure it will enhance it, but I think a person can enjoy this on a sober level like myself. Uh, for me, this uh, this is definitely one of my favorite discoveries in the last like year. Like, I really, really enjoy this film. I don't think it's bad in any way. I think it's absolutely fun and weird and bizarre. And for me, it hits all the right notes. How can you say it's not bad in any way? Uh, how, uh, what, what do you uh, think is bad about this film? First of all, I thought the lead actress had a speech impediment. I couldn't figure out 
whether she's doing an accent or just couldn't speak. I mean, how Who's can you? Know, wait, actress, let's doctor, be honest. Let's be honest. Dr. I, I, I th- well, I, I think That's the audio that mix isn't that great on okay. this, so it okay. is kind of hard to understand what people are okay. saying. Okay, That's one thing that was bad. I, okay. Uh, the acting is. I, well, I don't know. Is it? I no, can't, the acting is a different. It's a style choice. It's a stylistic choice. I don't think. <laughs> so that's, the directing was good it's or not bad. bad. Okay. All right. Yeah. Keep, keep keep talking, and then okay. We'll so let, it, well, I, we'll get into the, the main plot a little bit, so yeah. we can uh, comprehend this wonderful film. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, you have Dr. Caligari, who's like an evil mad scientist. Uh, she her you know her main goal is to um, cure her patients and the way she goes about that is she develops a method where she'll take hypothalamus gland juice and extract it and mix it into other people to let balance their personality so that they're cured but like really the plot follows uh, Mrs. Van Houten who is a uh, nymphomaniac and she has relapsed, and her husband calls Dr. Caligari for uh, advice. And Dr. Caligari wants uh, wants him to bring his wife back in for treatment. And so that that process is going on. And then you have another character that's introduced uh, introduced called Gus Pratt, and he is a cannibal that Dr. Caligari is treating. Uh, okay. And so he, they go through the treatment cycle, and then they end up being the patients that she uh, introduces her technique of hypothalamus glandular extraction and mixture into. And so you see the character swap personalities, basically. And then there's kind of like a subplot about uh, Dr. Avol, who's the actual head of the Caligari Insane Asylum, CIA. And uh, his, his daughter is trying to... Um, a usurp Dr. Caligari and get her out of there because they think she's, or she thinks that Dr. Caligari is evil and she's working with her husband to kick her out and take over basically. So well, that's the, that's the couple that has dinner with, is that the lead? The, 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 the sheep trotters couple. Yes. That's right. That eating sheep. Yes. Yeah. Eating the sheep yeah. legs or whatever the hell they were doing there. Yeah. Um, so, so basically by the end you, you get Dr. Avil. He, he is, he is also a victim of Dr. Caligari where he gets a bit of Mrs. Van Houten's, uh, nymphomania injected into him and he becomes, I, um, a horny drag queen. Yeah. A horny drag queen. Thank you. Drew. <laughs> Thank you. Drew. That's not a I criticism. Is, it's that, just that's what kind it of, is. That's kind of where the, uh, the John Waters aspect comes in, I guess you could say, I, or no, the Ed okay. Wood aspect. Yeah. All right. In the trailer, they mentioned Rocky Horror Picture Show. Was this was this designed to maybe hit that circuit? I mean, they, they basically say it in the trailer that this is midnight midnight showing stuff. I, I mean, I would say I don't know if it was, you know, if they they could very well have been aiming for that market because it does fit in that genre. But sure. I, I kind of think this is it's probably its own thing that they well, were I just see trying why to they market think, they were trying to market to that audience who loves this bizarre shit you know well i would think that they were like rocky i used to do the rocky horror back in boston i would go every friday night to the essex theater and do that whole shtick with the throwing the toast and the water and all that stuff i was i didn't dress up but i definitely enjoyed the show i think that you know you look at this one and they you know everybody's a character a character right you would think that this would be dress up material to go in and do this midnight movie thing so I, I just don't remember this one being as big. I, I just I just don't think it hit. Like I, I don't know if it, it <laughs> Gee, didn't have the the right promotion or if it was ahead of its time or because it's such I, a I good know, film. I don't know. You're right. It's such a good film. It is a good film. I, I mean, Rocky being Horror. Sarcastic. Rock, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> I'm being truthful. No, yes, I'm being ironical. It was not a good film. Drew, jump in. I got it. Drew. Well, I, it's funny you said about um, enhancing the experience chemically because uh, I did that uh, by accident. Uh, I was completely sober, but I was watching it on uh, on YouTube because uh, you know you held up that laser disc at the beginning. There really is no proper home video release for this no. movie beyond that, which is which is too bad because I mean you know any movie that's that's out there if it can get a decent release would be nice. But uh, I really, I mean, I. I guess I'm just getting old or something. I had trouble with the audio and I wanted to make sure I got everything. So I turned on the self-generating captions 
Yeah, that's, that's a whole other movie. Yeah. I mean, it's what? it's it was ridiculous. I feel like I had to to keep backing it up to make sure I didn't understand what I didn't understand what they said, which was already bizarre. But um, what is that? You I, say, um, when you say self, wait, back up. You say self generating. Is that YouTube trying to figure that's out? That's a they're... YouTube thing. Yeah, it's YouTube ah, listening to the audio right. and creating captions. Oh my god! Which is I've I've never really used that before, and no, I will definitely use it again for fun. But it wasn't super helpful in this case because the audio is rough. That's the only reason I was using it. Yeah. I presume if it was a you know a, a better a better mix that it would be more effective. But uh, it was. Well, I, I, it it was doesn't definitely help something. that this is like. This is this has like really snappy dialogue and really strange right. dialogue snappy. and it, it Oh just, my god, you're oh my god, what? you're so funny. The way you snappy dialogue? <laughs> it's snappy, it had, man. It had twisted on. weird. They were doing weird <laughs> like the affectations they were t- That's why the I, YouTube algorithm couldn't pick up the word cuz it's all affected weird shit that they were doing. I know, it's great. It's not is that snappy. Bad? Snappy dialogue <laughs> is like uh, you know, uh, uh, West Wing. That's snappy dialogue. No, you can no, understand. You wouldn't, this is, you wouldn't say, I can leave you an erotic husk, snappy dialogue. I think that's snappy dialogue. I, it, I would say it's interesting phrasing. I don't know or, if it's snappy or, dialogue. Or juice me, I'm a shiver boy. I got secret, needle, secret needles in my pokey globe. Right, I mean, okay. come on. I'm not saying it's interesting dialogue, but I don't think, I wouldn't call it snappy. But It's snappy. That's me. Okay. Um, honestly, I, I, as I'm watching this, and, and I can respect like going for an art aesthetic, and, and, but, but still it has to have some kind of meaning for me to watch this. I couldn't wait for it to be over. What, what, what <sighs> me, I don't know. What meaning? Are you looking for some like existential me- I'm meaning? I'm looking for, for a, like some kind of cohesiveness. Like why am I there watching this? There is cohesiveness. There is, a, there, is a, there is a plot <laughs> to this movie. I, I just got the plot when you said it. I had no idea that. I mean, I I, I kind of got that there was a couple that was trying to take her down. I didn't know that that was. It doesn't matter. I, I'm not the right audience for I this. I think it's obviously. very clear that the couple was trying to usurp her. <laughs> Nothing. Well, okay. <laughs> Nothing was clear, but okay, clear. I I think it's a it, the 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 beginning is very surrealistic because uh, Mrs. Van Houten's having her nymphomaniac breakdown, and she's. Um, you know she's she's watching a TV and she's there are elements of body horror in this. So she's watching a TV and there's a leg that a man starts to kiss a foot and there's a sore on it and it starts to like ooze pus oh, out of it. I thought that was a nipple. And then, That's a, that was a sore. No, I, I mean see, if I, you I, think I that's wish a nipple, I wish I could. I should I should have. I wish I did edibles because I think that would have made this a whole different experience. <laughs> I swear to God. Okay, yeah, but, but that's and then she starts masturbating in front of the TV. So I'm going, all right, I can. This is but yeah, this then, we, this what? satisfies your boob quota. Does not it? Does it I, I don't have it. By the way, I don't have a boob quota. Let's just flat out say that. I don't mind looking at a couple once in a while, but I didn't need you know. But I, I like good acting. I like some good story in there. You know, but and it was kind of it was artsy because the sets were. Very artistically the, made. This, I guess? It's a very eighties like stylized film. It's like it's like it's almost like Tim Burton, David Cronenberg got together and made a stage play with like a Pee Wee's Playhouse aesthetic. It's this very good, like colorful eighties you know new wave aesthetic that's like a stage play, and I love like I love all the movement that happens in it. It's not all just camera movement, but people like just zoom out of the scene and zoom into the scene and there's a lot of movement and I I just I love how they directed it and how it looks. Well, to me it felt like a music video that just went on and on and on. And yeah, it makes a good album cover, but I don't want to watch it for however long it was, 70 minutes. I don't even know how long it Honestly, was, uh, I slept too. I, I kept minutes. dropping lid through something. I was sleeping. I didn't know where I was. Jesus. It was awful. I'm sorry. I mean, you where's, know. I'm, where's your commitment, man? I, Come on. I, believe me, I couldn't. Okay, Drew, what's, what are your thoughts well, on this? I have I have a lot of thoughts on this movie, and it actually caused me to do some homework. Oh, um, so I'm glad that, somebody I did. This, I think this movie sits in a context that's worth noting on a couple of different levels. One of them, um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on his first name. I think it's Roger, but the director, Sayadian, um, he Steven. made this movie in 1989. Is it Steven? Steven Sayadian? Yeah. Okay. So he made a movie in um, the early 80s 
early 80s maybe it was the 70s but it was part it was one of those movies when when porn movies were in real movie theaters you know the era uh, you know started off with things like deep throat and inside missy beethoven and behind the green door and all that stuff and it was called cafe flesh and it was one of these trying to be a legit movie porn films. It was a science fiction movie. I haven't seen it, but I know the premise is that there was some kind of nuclear war and 99% of the uh, population of the earth is called, they're called negatives because when they try to have sex, they throw up and the other 1% are called positives and they can actually have sex. So the negatives make them basically have sex in front of them so they can live vicariously. That sounds like a lot, but that also doesn't sound like it's completely unrelated to what we see in this movie. Um, unfortunately, I guess his career didn't go, you know, any differently than any of these other big porn makers. It didn't become legitimate. But to me, this movie, I mean, it's not really to my taste or anything. I'm glad that I saw it. Um, I will say when I was watching it, uh, my wife Kelly walked into the room when uh, she was uh, being intimate with the, the door of flesh and mouths. And she walked in and she's like, nope. And she turned around and she left. That was, that was for me, one of the peaks of the experience of the movie was that scene. Because, you, you, you know, there's no, there's no question that this is not Pee Wee's Playhouse. Um, that was a, a, little, a little bit of an early peak for me, honestly. There was one of those walls what? with a scar on it. And I, I, I yeah, it's a pulsating mound of flesh that's in a doorway and a giant tongue comes out. And there's a lot of... You know, we, we talked about tongue play in the, in the Devil's Honey. Well, this is like David Cronenberg tongue play. Well, you like could see that one scene where flesh the, door. What, the one scene I do remember is the tongue. She's kissing the tongue in her mouth. Yeah. Like that long tongue. And then the tongue gets engorged. And yes. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's <laughs> not subtle. Right Same now. thing happens to her. Same thing happens to her. I think it was her right hand at one point um, in, a, in a, a scene where she shares um, marital coitus with her husband. Um, perhaps after he was enslaved as a person in the asylum. I, I can't remember. There's, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think you just decided you weren't interested at, at pretty quickly. I don't think the plot is hard to follow. It's ridiculous. But I think it's it's clear, you know, what's going on in the movie. No, I didn't. I, I didn't did drop more. out quickly. I just kind of was drifting okay. in and out. I mean, I was kind of drifting in and out. I couldn't get past the speech patterns that they were doing and the kind of artsy fartsy it's, way. It's that very they were. it's very stilted dialogue. I would. I, I, yeah. the, the delivery yeah. is very stilted. But it I was think very that stagey. Ad- very stagey. Yeah, I, I think it, it adds to the charm of this. I, some I, this, would call uh, it charming, and some yes. may call it something else. Well, I'm not we, saying the movie. Talk? I'm not saying the movie had no charm, right? I mean, I was the 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 art direction was interesting. There's no question about that. Um, well, can, can just, we talk about it? It's, it's supposed to be. I mean, it's not a secret. It's supposed to be a, a sequel to the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Uh, at the end, the brain in a jar is. Um, it's her, she calls it. It's her great grandfather, or anything like yeah. something like that. So part of my homework was that I watched The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which somehow I had studied in in college and had never actually seen. So first, a public service announcement. If you want to watch the movie, which is well worth your time, you can go on Amazon, and they have a free version on Prime that's described as a restored version uh, that uh, looks looks like crap and um, uh, has all the English title cards and not the greatest translation. So I watched that, and I was like, "This this is neat, but... This movie looks terrible. Then I found on Canopy, which is the free movie service that you get through your local library. Canopy with a K, I I recommend it. They are not a sponsor or anything, but they're excellent. They have uh, Kino Lorber's 4K restoration, which already for a movie from 1920 looks amazing. But after watching the crappy version, I mean, it's like a revelation. So this movie, I mean, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is basically considered the first horror movie. And it's also a movie uh, that's uh, a great example of German expressionism. And so the look of this sequel is completely influenced, of course, by the movie that it's supposed to be the sequel to. And, you know, the, the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, the whole thing almost was shot on stages. The whole atmosphere that they built of the town that they live in and the areas in the town, it's all those windows that are crooked and doorways that go at different angles and weird tight passages and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that is that is deliberately and obviously what influences the look of the movie. But like you said, Al, it's got that 80s neon thing going on. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, I mean, I, I don't look at it and think, oh, I, I want to decorate my den with that. 
but it's got a distinct purposeful look to it and um i think you know it's it's got kind of a i don't know i I guess a miami vice but on more crack 80s neon type of vibe but also the the story of the story of the two movies there's not a lot in common of the stories but they are both horror movies and they are both about um you know taking place in asylums i will say as an aside i I do have some experience with uh, mental health care. I I don't think this was the most realistic depiction of um, <laughs> of mental say. health institutions. Uh, I don't think it was a realistic depiction of things like uh, ECT and stuff like that. But I, that said, I, I I wasn't offended. I said I don't I don't think they're trying to be real here with the whole injecting each other's personalities into their forehead. So I don't want people to be put off by that. That's a nice public service announcement you just made. I never Thank even you. look at this film and think any reality whatsoever. I, I swear, all I could think of was album covers and music videos. Like, like that aesthetic that they were going for was just... <clears throat> right, but it's, just, it's that aesthetic I fueled I by, by 1920s German expressionism. Right. Consciously right. so. So it's very creative. Again, not necessarily to my, to my taste and definitely not a movie for everyone. But, I mean, I didn't, I didn't watch The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and go... You know what this needs is a door that licks you back. But that part of the movie was funny and yeah, no, crazy. No, I mean I'm not gonna, you know, the, the, the aesthetic is interesting, right? They had a they had to pull the aesthetic off. The actors all had mm-hmm. to jive to what was going on. It had to have been a lot of work to to keep it moving. I mean, yes, it's still a movie. It still works as a film from beginning to end. Um, I just found it disconcerting and and. Like I don't, I didn't understand the point of the affectations. Well, what, what's di- and all what's the, disconcerting about it? Just because it made no. It's like, what's the point of all that? What it's just, it's just the aesthetic. Yeah, but what's, the point? what's the point of any movie, though? We have this argument all the time. One point is <laughs> that it makes sense. That would be a good point. That <laughs> and I that, argue that this movie makes sense. That, you know what? When it cut, I think it makes it said, sense. It, uh, it, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense. It's just so ridiculously stupid. Well, that's that's a different uh, thing. It can okay. make sense and hold together as a plot and be ridiculous, or it can really not make sense. And there are movies that definitely don't make sense, and that uh, or that are totally open to interpretation. Like this isn't a movie that has a lot of mystery. This isn't a no. David Lynch movie no. where you say, "Well, you know, I could interpret it in three different ways," and those are all probably as legitimate yeah. as anything else. But there, there's no like mystery at the heart of this. It's it's a kind of sort of earnestly goofy, gross. Silly. Honestly, I, I, honestly you know, at, at a certain point, I thought it was going to be a musical, and I was, I was kind of well, curious to see if they were going to start singing, and I wouldn't have minded that. So, Well, that's what Rocky Horror was different and, and what made Rocky Horror what it is today, which is it's ultimately a musical. That, But I can see what they were... I, I got to believe that they're, they were just really trying to get this in the midnight thing and have what happened with Rocky Horror, that people would dress up like these people, that they would... There would be signals for them to do whatever they have to do. I, I that's that's got to be what this was, and I don't know if well, it mean, worked people, because I had never heard about this until Al brought it to the show. That there was I even mean, people this. make movies for the movie Midnight Movie Circuit, sure, uh, you know, at least back then. And so I, I don't know the specific history. I don't know if Al can tell us more about you know the the people who actually made the movie and what their their goals were. I know you don't make this movie and say we're going to the Oscars, but that's fine. Because you know all different movies serve different audiences, and I think this this movie definitely has an audience. And if you start poking around about the movie, you find a lot of people that are really you know really well, dedicated I, you know, fans know, like, to this, it and love it and wish it had a Blu-ray and all that kind oh, of stuff. Sure. So. I mean, th- this this is a heavily requested film to be transferred yeah. to Blu-ray, and this is only it's only there was a DVD that came out maybe twenty years ago that was only. Oh. Uh, sold by like uh, the pornography company that has the rights to the film, but like this this is obviously not a pornographic film. It's rated R. No, there are there are sexual elements, of course, but I mean that there it's it's basically a lost film, and people heavily request you know companies like Vinegar Syndrome to put this out, as well as like Cafe Flesh and all right. the they call it like I think they call it like the Rinse Dream trilogy. Because the the director, his AKA title, uh, his what Noam de Plume is, um, Rinse Dream. So, th- What's this the is third a movie. Uh, he he had a couple. He did a couple uh, 
uh, let's see, it was Night Dreams 2 and 3, and he also did a, a movie called Party Doll A Go-Go. Oh, so this is a trilogy that? like like uh, like Douglas Adams' trilogy with five yeah. books and counting or whatever. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, I got to believe when they made Rocky Horror, they didn't think this is going to be a midnight show. It's just a a movie they thought was going to be big that just didn't, and it ends up being like Mummy Dearest, same thing, right? That was movie well, kind yeah, of I don't, flopped. I, I agree. I don't. I don't, I don't think people make a movie and say that this is not going to be respected as a regular no, release and I, we're going to go for my, crazy. My I, point, I think that's fair. I think that's but fair. my point is, I think this was made specifically for Midnight Movie. That they, I don't think they ever thought this was going to be mainstream. I thought this was a direct line. Well, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, yeah. I don't... Yeah. And I don't see sense. anything wrong with uh, to, you know making a movie that's solely directed at a midnight I'm movie not, audience. I'm not blaming anybody for making a film ever, right? If you can make a film and get it out, however, great. I mean, more power to you. You know, YouTube has proved that that's very democratic now. If you want to make a film, you can get it out there. These were the days in the '80s that that wasn't the case. And you know, right. this guy. I mean, th- it's a very interesting aesthetic. I'm not, I, you know, like you said, your comparison: Tim Robbins, David Cron, uh, Tim, uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton, Tim Robbins, Jesus. Tim Robbins, Tim Burton, Tim Bur- whatever. <laughs> Tim Burton, David Cronenberg. <laughs> I was thinking that while I'm watching it, because all I could think of was the uh, like Nightmare Before Christmas and that aesthetic in that film. Well, it kind of has this, like the be- like Beetlejuice has Beetlejuice. that. Yeah, yeah. Beetlejuice, exactly. Beetlejuice was the other one I was. Look, thinking if about, so, if it was 19, if it was the 1920s, Tim Burton would be making German expressionist films. That, sure. I mean, that is a clear influence on his style, not just in a movie, but in a, across his work. That's clearly an aesthetic that that he really connects with. And the whole point of that aesthetic is to be disruptive and to be disconcerting and to be all those things. And you can ascribe all different kinds of reasons for that, but basically Germany lost World War II and what's next seems scary. I don't think anybody knew how scary it was going to be, but this is the interwar period where people feel very dislocated, where this war was, uh, you know, was supposed to be this thing that would be won gloriously and it wasn't. And so the art reflected that. Because remember, expressionism isn't just movies, it's painting, it's all different styles. And it, uh, these, these lines that you see in the movie, yes, they're all neon in this movie that we're talking about, but all those those jagged edges of windows and stylized doors and, and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that is, that is straight out of, um, oh, of ironically, uh, 69 years before um, this movie was made. So I think I think I didn't, I didn't love the movie or anything, no, but I, I got it. I appreciate, I appreciated that we watched it. And, you know, there yeah. was a question last week. Did we talk about a cult movie last week with the disappearance of Alice Creed? This is definitely a cult movie. Oh yeah, definitely a cult movie, and yeah, that's and, and you just elevated it up beyond what I even was thinking. You know, just by bringing what you were just saying. I mean, the way you can elevate this stuff is is amazing, and I appreciate that. I just, uh, I guess this would be a film that I would recommend if you really want to see something super quirky and you know, and and, and that aesthetic I, that they I were think going if for. You, I think if you want to hear interesting dialogue, interesting <laughs> creative dialogue, oh I think this is for you. How do you? I mean, I okay. love the you dialogue. Mean, yeah, like, come on. Like, like she it says, is very stylized, poetic weirdness. She, That's she true. says, "Ooh wee, my fuzzy button feels sloppy good. I've got a bucket of goofy fish in my belly." That is what definitely is not poetic. To You're right. I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that uh, that prose is amazing. My bad. It is amazing. I swear to God. And I, I recommend. Think- I recommend that you go to YouTube and and put that scene on and put the captions on because I, I, it will give you something else that's also <laughs> ridiculous. Now, if you just do that, it will it will screw up the story because then you're right. like, I don't understand what's happening even more. But uh, that was a that was a dislocating expressionist part of my experience. That's amazing. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, anything else you'd like to do to uh, enhance this film or to? And, or do you, I guess Al, you recommend this film. Absolutely, I think everyone should see this okay. film. Okay, what in and this I, film? But I also, I also realized that this film is not for everyone, Thank and you. it's probably one of those love hate films. Either you really love it and you're really into what they did, or you just don't like it and don't get it, and you just. That's funny. I, I don't. I didn't have love hate. I was right smack in the middle because I just, I couldn't keep. I just, I, I liked what they were trying to do. I did like the direction of the sets and the direction of the actors and they had to all pull that stuff off. I did like and they're all they're all very good at it. No question about it. I just 
just it was just it was just quirky for quirk's sake, right? Without any, I don't know. It just felt like they were trying really hard. I don't know that I agree with that. Well, that's fine. I I I both I don't agree with that. It was just trying to be weird. It was trying to be a specific kind of weird, which I I think they did pull off. I mean, the fact is, I guess it was shot on video for you know a a low budget amount of money, and it's not a movie that's trying to be pretty. I mean, when you the movie first opens, you're you're basically the camera is moving over. You don't know what it is. Like, is that a landscape? Is that you know we're going it's a, it's to, to reach the asylum? Right. Like, it's not clear what it is, and it's it's like a handmade uh, set design texture, and um, it doesn't feel like a real thing. Which again is is I mean, Cabin of Dr. Caligari, the the town when you first see it is is a painting, and it's clearly a painting. It's not like a matte painting that's trying to pretend that this is really in the in the forest or or whatever. And so you know they they embrace that for sure. So I think it's good that you that you gave it a chance. I think that's the whole point of our conversations here. But you know, if you don't like it, that's cool. Yeah, no, no. And I, you, you got to wonder why they haven't put a Blu-ray out. I mean, if everybody's clamoring, I, there's it's gotta probably be a, a rights issue. I'm sure. Oh, okay. Well, and also, I, I don't know what. I mean, this movie, if it's shot on video in the '80s, there is no version that looks amazing. So I don't know what there is to restore and what quality people can think that they can get it to. That's a good. So point. between that and fighting for the rights, I mean, all this stuff is all tied up in different things. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure Vinegar Syndrome, if they wanted to do it, they would do an amazing job, and so would a number of other yeah. uh, uh, other now, music look, labels. And I don't totally disavow this film at all. I mean, I think it has an interesting. It's it's a time capsule for sure. Of the '80s, there's no question. And I think the only thing that bothers me is I think they really were trying to do the Rocky Horror thing. And, and you know, that was at the top of their mind the whole time. And I just think they were going for Quirk for that reason. They wanted to create the events that happened at the Rocky Horror Picture Show stuff. And I just don't think this one worked that well. Again, well, you keep mentioning edible, it. I might be a, have a different, complete <laughs> take. On well, you keep, you keep mentioning it. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to be honest. Are you guys sitting down? Yes. I've never seen the Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's amazing. <laughs> I've never I mean, seen just it. even watch it on television or never been I've to I've never the seen thing. it. I know the songs. I would recognize a clip if you showed me. I've never seen it. Now, that's, a, that's amazing. I would go to the theater for a sing along. I'm not a, against the idea of it. But uh, the last movie that I saw in the theater and had a, a part to sing along to, which was very exciting, was Hedwig and the Angry Inch, which <laughs> I adore that movie. But, uh, and I'm, again, just like um, it's a wonderful life, I'm not against seeing yeah, this no, movie. I, I just listen, haven't seen it. So, if you watch Rocky, if I said watch Rocky Horror, not knowing its backstory <clears throat> and what it ended up being, you'd go this and watching is a it at piece. home, right? What <laughs> right. the hell is going on in this film? What made Rocky Horror was all the stuff that happened when it didn't work as a regular film, and it turned into a Midnight Madness film. I mean, I went every Friday for two years. Sure. Drove 45 minutes just to do this thing, throwing the water. In the, it was awesome. And, uh, but as a film, it's like, what? The, and they try to make a sequel. That bombed because you, you can't capture that magic. And I think that's right. my point. I think they were trying to capture that magic with this one and try too hard. And like the, the, well, the aesthetic is interesting, but it, again, it doesn't. And the Rocky Horror, if you, <laughs> I'm saying all this. If you break down the Rocky Horror Picture Show, that's another one where you go, what the? What's going on here? <laughs> so. Well, the, thing, the other thing about that is, uh, I mean, you know, the, this is being recorded in early March of 2021. I haven't been to a movie theater, something that I love to do, for more than a year now. And yeah. actually, I guess last weekend uh, was the, the last normal weekend in America before everything yeah, started year, to really year lock down now, and yeah. shut down. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a year. Yeah. And... Um, I mean, I even remember this this upcoming weekend a year ago. I really wanted to see a movie, and I was like, Should, "They're not really close. Should we do it?" And my wife and I looked at each other, and we were like, "I guess we uh, no. I don't think yeah. it's a good idea." And then all of a sudden, it's been a year, yeah. and so you know, there's there, you don't have to sell me on the experience of Rocky Horror as um, as an audience thing, but it makes me not care to see it without that. Like Caligula, I saw that when they restored it, or as the poster said, <laughs> resorted it. Well, I, I saw that. Um, I saw that at, at, in the theater in Los Angeles with a full house, and um, you know a, a lot of uh, celebrities joining us in the crowd. Um, my personal favorite, Gina Gershon, was there, so I can mm. pretend that I went to the movie with her. And um, I mean, it was ridiculous to watch that audience, ridiculous audience movie participation with a crowd. in that one. 
<laughs> no, it's not, but just the no. reactions to it. No. I mean, okay. it's just the that movie was... is, is totally <laughs> insane. Yeah. And it's not a movie. Like, I'm so glad I went and I saw it. I don't need to own it. I don't need to watch it at home. I don't need to show it to my nieces and nephews when they come visit. You know, like, it's not, it's not something that I need to see. But I'm so glad that I saw it with an audience. And yeah. I think, you know, this movie with an audience, this Dr. Caligula, Dr. Caligula, Dr. <laughs> Caligari <laughs> Listen, movie. There's a new that's movie. A, that's a remake. I think, I think that would be, that would Caligula. be fun. And so if I were going, to, if I were going to see this one with a bunch of people to make fun of it, I'm in. I'm in. I just don't know. I, think, I don't know what the, the, the tricks would be. Like, you know, with Rocky Horror, you're saying you're throwing water and stuff. Like, what, uh, believe what me. would you, uh, what, you, what would be, what would you do I with mean, this one? Come on, use your imagination. Would you, would you bring out the giant tongues and start, like, hitting each other with Ooh. them? There'd be some, somebody would figure out something. Someone would dress as Dr. Caligari, right? There'd be someone yeah. dressed in that outfit. No, come on. That's ridiculous. You could it, throw it, you could throw human meat at the screen. Uh, yeah, it'd be all kinds of stuff. You, know. I mean, you could hand out watchtowers. Do it, there you, you go. Know, you could eat lambs. What's that <laughs> lamb foot or sheep? Whatever. The sheep trotter. Yeah. Sheep trotter. trotter could make yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Someone would make that. Which, anyway. which right. we, you know, we haven't really talked about that scene, but I, that's uh, I find that scene incredibly funny, where they're chewing on the the lamb's feet with the the fur still on it, like while well, they shave the, the fur at one point, yeah. the sheer one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, we can talk about. I want to. I want to give it. I want to give a special yeah, shout out to uh, Fox Harris who Remember played Doctor Avil. Right. I think this was, was his film. last. It was his last film, and I think he did an incredible job, incredible. especially when after he transformed into the drag queen. I love. I love his character. Fun to I love watch. his acting. You I, see, I love, you see that I alone right there. I love the dialogue right that he delivers. See, you just again, you're reminding me. He turns into a drag queen. I must have fallen asleep at that part. I'm sorry, but that's Frankenfurter right there. That's Rocky Horror. I mean, it's like it's it's, it's all it, over it, this but thing. Th- this is more like Ed, uh, this. He looks more like Ed Wood to me. Okay, but it doesn't when, matter. He's still a drag queen. I mean, uh, uh, the guy playing Frankenstein didn't look like a woman. He looked like a giant dude dressed as a woman. I'm I, talking about I, Tim. I, I, the whole I, genre I like of movies, guy. right? Sure, so, Hedwig right. and Priscilla okay. and all okay. that stuff. Sure, good shout out and, for and, that guy. And he, and he also reminds me. Uh, here's a deep cut. He reminds me of American physicist and t- television entertainer Julius Sumner Miller. If you've ever seen his science shows for kids, because no he looks exactly no. like him. So go check him out on YouTube. That he's is a, a, he's deep a pretty dive. weird dude. So deep, nobody knows. Okay. Uh, so Al, you know, you keep talking about this film. I don't quite get it, but uh, just give me one or two of your favorite scenes. And, and and try to describe them so it makes it appealing to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I don't know if it'll be appealing to you, but uh, I, I would say my first one that wins an award for uh, making you feel uncomfortable and grossing you out is the um, the door scene with the, the Cronenberg-esque scene with the, the pulsating flesh in the doorway. And the flesh is like scarred and it's like stitched together and it starts to split up and it starts to ooze grossness. And uh, Mrs. Van Houten's kind of getting horny uh, <laughs> for this door. Her nymphomania is really kicking in, right? So kicking in hard. She, she goes up to it and out comes this tongue. And it, it is a massive tongue and it uh, starts licking her head. She's rubbing her head all over it and... Uh, you know, she starts licking the tongue, and then you, Ralph er, described yeah, at one the, point. Okay, that's the well, scene yeah, where the tongue. Right. Yeah. Engorges. Yeah. And, and, and you see the tongue go into her mouth and engorges, uh, like male genitalia will engorge, and then, huh? Surprise! Huh. Surprise! Right. Interesting. Uh, I thought that so was a I, metaphor. What an interesting inference! I never thought of that. <laughs> I know. Uh, that's one. What's it's your? You have a second. Is there? A, you had a second favorite scene. The second one, I think, is less perverted. Um, oh, it's uh, it's when Dr. Caligari is actually injecting the different personalities into uh, Gus and Mrs. Van Houten, and you can actually, I think, the actors do a really good job of mimicking the other characters. So, like, Mrs. Van Houten is like really you can tell she has become Gus the way she speaks and the dialogue she's using and she becomes the cannibal where she actually at the end of the film ends up eating her husband and then uh Gus becomes her and he's he I it almost seems like he he has like some gender confusion 
in that part of the movie after that happens because he he like goes and has a monologue in front of a mirror and he like shows his body but it's kind of blurred out so it's like he he doesn't really know if he's a man or a woman i think in that point but he's he's kind of struggling with his nymphomania i guess but i i really i really enjoy those scenes i know what i am i just can't understand your taste in films i mean it's fine it's good because it's it makes this makes this very interesting but like uh is it like you just like things that are completely off kilter and not mainstream say, at all? You make it sound like an accusation, Ralph. This is a safe space for <laughs> cult movie enthusiasts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I just need to I, know. The guy I like likes it. weird shit. A, What's listen, the matter with that? Listen, I, I am not, I a, like you know, I'm, I'm cult light. I'm cult light, okay? So I'm trying to figure out. Why I you think like this movie like this? is, even though if you reduct it to its influences, I think this movie is incredibly imaginative. That's what I like about it. And I love German expressionism. So whenever I see that in a movie that like, I love seeing that. And I think they do it really well. And I love all the weird, distinct, I, yeah. I, I, I love don't... all the psychosexual weirdness that goes on in this movie and the mind swaps and the different characters are, I, I, the different characters are unique into themselves. Like it's all these weird characters. They're all together in this asylum. And we didn't even mention the chinchilla lady. That's just like, yeah, all she says is chinchilla, chinchilla. 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 And it's just so, it's so weird. And it's not something you would see like in a typical movie. It's like, they really went out there with their imagination and created well, something okay. unique and special. Right. I think. Let me ground this a little bit. There's a reason they wouldn't have that character just bounce into a movie because it's like, what's the, what's the point? Now, in this film, I guess that makes sense, right? It makes sense. Yeah, because she's happening. in an asylum. Okay, right. It's a stereotypical asylum thing. There's people banging their heads on the wall and, and <laughs> sure, saying silly things over and over. I mean, uh. it's not, it's, it's, a, it's like a, it's like a, that's how uh, mental illness is shown in the movies. Like, it's not mm-hmm. a new thing. I, I, I said, oh, that, that's the character. You know, I mean, they're, everybody's wearing their, their hospital gowns and, and, and walking around and wiggling their fingers and stuff. I mean, it, again, not the most realistic depiction, and that's fine. Yeah. But it definitely I, feels like the way you've seen that in other movies. This is a realistic depiction of anything. This is right. Which uh, right? It's about yeah. real things, though. I mean, it's it's yeah. about it's about relationships that you can relate to between you know, of parents and children, and husbands and wives, yeah. and uh, and dead people and the people who eat them. Like it's all in there. <laughs> so I think um, I, I I'm glad that I saw it. Listen, so I am trying to break it. through. I'm trying to break through and not get caught up in my box that keeps me from liking a film like this. No lie. I'll, I'll grant you that. And I've learned. I'm learning a lot watching these films. There's a lot I've completely enjoyed. And you know that 1313, you know, <laughs> other than that one. I mean, that movie's garbage. That's okay. If you yeah, but even that. that one had an aesthetic that was sort of kitschy and fun. Okay. And like this one, I did not, I appreciated the, what was going on in this. I, like you said, like we all said. I was seeing Beetlejuice vibes. I was getting all the vibes. I just couldn't, and maybe my mindset wasn't right. I just couldn't get into the affectations and what was going on and, and took me out of it. And that's just me. And right. I'm trying to open myself up to more of this stuff um, because I don't want to be stuck in one you know, mindset. I like to open it up. And yeah. I think, if, well, maybe, like I said, maybe. if I had taken an edible and opened it up, I would probably, you know. Well, maybe you, should, uh, maybe you should watch it with your kids. You know, make it a family thing. Oh, my God. They won't watch regular stuff with me. If I put that in front of them, they're going to put me away. I maybe just, they'll, uh, for, maybe they'll for love me, it. The, the, this maybe. movie checks a lot of boxes for me. Okay, name. So, uh, give me the three checks. What are the... Hey, okay, Ger- I want to hear it, that it list. Has, it's, so, German give me the list. Hold on. Give me the list. What's the list? Okay, so German Expressionism, body horror, and the weird psychosexual aspect of it. And then like uh, mind transference, like cha- swapping bodies. I, I, th- those are like all great sci-fi concepts and like art influences. And the, the, it, this has all of it. And it has the weird dialogue on top of it. And I, I just love weird creative dialogue, even if it's like, if it's like this, like uh, some of the examples that I've said. Like, the, she, at one point she says, "I'm on a radiation vacation, soaking, soaking up, up the, the gammas." gammas. All the well, he-men do their bomb testing just over the ridge there. Can't you smell it? 
Baby, I talked to Dr. Caligari this morning. It's so non sequitur and weird, yeah. and I just, I love yeah. that stuff. It's like someone took a bunch of words, threw them up in the air, and read however they landed on the ground. But it's not, it's not look. words, it's not word salad. It's not, it's not, it's not word, it's not I think, word I think salad. It's, it's okay. like, it, there's right. an idea there, but yep. it's like a mentally, yep. I, I guess, think, a mentally ill okay. person now saying you, that, now but you, there's now an idea. You're going overboard. Well, I think, I think that you asked, you asked, um, you asked Al to tell you favorite scenes, but I would say something I think clearly that you like about this movie, Al, is the the monologues and yes. the vibe that they that they give you when you're watching them. I mean, you you can like it or not like it as Ralph is reacting to different stuff of the movie. But when the guy is sitting in the ECT chair, the cannibal is sitting in the ECT chair and just running his mouth at Dr. Caligari. I mean, there's definitely this weird atmosphere that it builds. I like the dirty talk, all that bolt and electrode stuff. You want to buzz me more? When I get a little, I always want a lot. You're a piggy little thing. You want more? I told you I got the itch. I'm burning up. I'm a hunk of electric corpuscles. And then it goes back and forth. The number of characters, they monologue to each other. They monologue to the camera. They monologue to nothing. And I mean, describing it like that makes it sound tedious. It's not tedious, but they definitely do in a lot of and, weird and I think stuff that's and what I mean by language. Like, and I think that's cool. I think that's what I mean by snappy. It's like this, these monologues, they're just like, to me, it's snappy. It's like these, these weird chunks of that. ideas that they're just like throwing right, but at guys, you. Okay. If we're, if here's, here's the issue that I'm having. <laughs> okay. If you're, if we're doing this podcast, this thing, because we want to recommend cult films to people and say, you should open your mind up and watch these things. And really, you want to take I, I, straight isn't the right word, but but people like me who are in a box didn't really d- delve into the cult. If this is the one you're going to use it as an example, I'm never going to go back to cult, right? Well, I'm, I'm going to be like, come I'm on, gonna, this can't be the. You, I mean, this can't. is deep cult, though. I'm going to take issue with your characterization of what we're doing here. I think if we watch something that is worth recommending by any or all of us that's an important part of what we can do i don't but disagree i with mostly that. in i mostly enjoy uh what we're doing here more than anything else the the great conversations that these movies have have given us and some of these movies we've seen some of them we haven't seen uh any movie that's brought whether it's a ralph's request or one of the ones that we bring it's brought you know specifically for thoughtful reason because i've described this show to some people that i know are are not going to be interested in playing the Ralph role in this show. Like, they're just not. But, uh, you know, they'll tell me, I have not heard of that movie in a given episode. I don't want to watch that movie. But I really enjoyed listening to you guys talk about it. Yeah. Sold. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, you can open your eyes up to a whole world of, of films and storytelling and all that kind of stuff and say, I don't like all of it. Okay, well, so, I Al, mean, I uh, like action movies, I, but I, I don't I, like every so action Al, movie. Do you, let me ask you a question. Body, you like body swapping? So thir- 13 going on 30. You like that film? I've actually never seen that. Okay. So I won't. Um, I, I've seen Vice Versa with uh, Fred Judd Savage. Ab- Judd, and- Judd, no, Judd. I said Judd Apto. Judd, Judge Judd Reinhold. Judge Reinhold. Reinhold. Judge Reinhold. Reinhold. Yes. And is that <laughs> Fred Savage? <laughs> is it? I can't. I, think I know it it's definitely I mix them up. Reinhold. There's a couple of those in the Switch? Do you ever see Switch? Young man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ellen, Ellen Barkin. And, uh, anyway. So I'm just, I just want to see. The Pixar movie that has that. Wow, what about no? What's the one that uh, C. Thomas Howell did? Soul Man. (laughs) Oh my God, that's not a body switch. That's just straight up minstrel blackface horror shit. I mean, Jesus, that movie. And I bet Al loves that one. Yeah, because it's weird, right? I don't like. I mean, let's be honest. Al likes weird. Al likes weird. If it's if it's a mainstream film that has the same themes that he loves in this one, he's not going to like it. In my opinion, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. Although there's a film you surprised me the last time we talked that you said you liked, and it's like a romantic comedy, and it just blew me away. I like romantic comedies. I know. I guess I guess I just never see psychos you. in love. Well, yeah. yeah, come on. I just never see you mainstream, <laughs> and I think that's I'm wrong about that. That's my I mean, uh, obviously that's my I can bad. talk about mainstream films, but that's not what I want to talk about. Like right. mainstream films. Everybody, every, you know, YouTube is littered with people who talk about mainstream films. Like yeah. that's, I, I sure I could talk about it, but it's, it's not interesting well, to yeah. me. That that's reminds fair. me, everybody, please check out the new show Stream Quest, where we review what you can watch every week uh, on your streaming services. There's nothing wrong with with having a taste that you consciously are, you know, defiant. I want to, I want to see something different because that's yeah. what I like. 
And yeah. when you well, the way you described it, Ralph, you make it sound like it's some sort of like poser thing, and I, I that it's it's just that's what's, what what's you who? like. What I'm you being like. a poser, or who's being poser? No, 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 you're like like you're saying like Al, well, you just you just want to like shit that's weird, or you just want to that, like well, stuff that's that true. mainstream. That is true. But but that's I mean, but that's not. That's but you're true. saying it. You're oh. saying it as a criticism, and I'm, I'm not saying, saying it as a criticism. That, I'm saying it as one his personality. Well, like he he admits it. Well, I, there's right. That's that's his I, taste. I, and that's a legitimate taste. I'm not blaming him. I I I'm not attacking you. I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by. I'm fascinated by it that that and, it, and like you said, every time we bring up like in a movie, there's not enough nihilism. Like if the movie goes nihilism, he goes, yeah, that would have been good, but I would rather see them, <laughs> whatever. It is. I would rather be in the pits of hell and be even more in the pits of hell, even though they're in the pits of hell. Well, if you're going to do it, there's not dude, enough Al, stakes going through the chest Al, to lift not, the guy. No half, way, no half measures. <laughs> Al is our, Al is our well-informed and, and beloved contrarian. And right. um, uh, I, I think that's great. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm not. This is, is not. You, a, Al, you have brought movies to this to this show that I have never heard of. Right. And that's exciting too. Right. And this is. I'm Some not complaining. Were, were I'm just watching. saying that it's a fascinating <laughs> aspect of the show. I guess. I guess my hope was that you would have liked it a little more than you did. That's. I didn't. Why? Why do you, you care? Look. That's the other thing. Why? Know. Well, I mean, That's when fun. I bring a movie, I want you guys to like it because it's a personal pleasure of mine is sharing a movie that I, I like. But if you don't like it, I like you just said, I want to know why you don't yeah. like it. Not because I want to defend it or even convince you. Right. No, but I if mean, you yes. tell me what you yeah. don't like about it, I'm probably hearing something I haven't thought about. Like, look, yeah. the, the greatest movie ever made uh, in, the, in the history of filmmaking is Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> I want everyone that I recommend that movie to to have the transcendent experience right. that I had it. All four times in the theater and countless times that I've seen it at home and parts of it and, and whatever. If you don't have that, that's not you know, in and well, of itself bad, but that's what yip, I want for everybody yip, to have. Yippee Kaye and beat that out of me, okay? Because when I bring movies like <laughs> The Counselor and uh, Clue, uh, that movies I love, and I get ravaged because five of them didn't like, you know, I'm used to that. So it, it kind of adds to the conflict and it makes it fun. Look at what we did to Debbie with... Uh, uh, the, the Spitfire Grill. I mean, oh, that was great. Debbie have, did that to Debbie, right? But that we was great. She brought it. She was like, she's like, this isn't good. I don't like it. Right. So <laughs> it's fun. Great. It's fun to disagree and to fight a little bit. And oh yeah. I'm not doing Listen, it. I, I'm not purposely doing it. Like I didn't go into this film going, I don't want to like it. I was just, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't get that's in. Fair. I just, I didn't. I just, couldn't you couldn't get it. it. It's not for you. That's right. fair. Listen, you've right. done a bunch of episodes. I would love to have been on the episodes where you did Waterworld, Taking of Pelham, One, Two, Three, <laughs> Martyrs, and The Counselor. I love those movies. Yeah. I would love to talk about those uh, movies. You, so, you like The Counselor? The Counselor is such a hot piece of trash oh, that I thoroughly it's enjoy. So it. bad. <laughs> oh my yeah, god! It is. No, see, it's this so is, bad, and listen, I love it. It's funny you say that because you're the reason you hate. <laughs> The counselor is the same reason you love the one you just talked about. It's the monologues and what they're saying and the affected speech. That's all the counselor is. It's just monologues and affected speech that go and nowhere and do fucking. nothing. And, and car, car fucking, fucking, which Crash had done a lot for uh, earlier than this one. But, you know, that whole monologue that uh, Brad Pitt has in the bar about snuff films and all that, that was all, you called it pretentious when the counselor does it, but genius when this guy does it in this yes, freaking movie exactly. you just saw. <laughs> See, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's It makes absolute sense. Of course it does not, and that's the beauty of this. That's why it's fun, because you rip that one to shreds. And and this one is just See, as pretentious. The, the, it's actually me, more like, pretentious. Okay, you, you, okay, so you call this one try-hard. I think the counselor is try-hard, whereas this one this one seems legitimate. Like, they, like this was their... I don't know. This one seems legitimate, where the other one seems try-hard, and, and they're... They're oh, trying to make some pretentious on. piece of Oh, you're giving this all the breaks in the world and the counselor. No, you're, you're upset because the counselor was written by someone who should know better. That's probably made for a hundred grand. Okay. And the counselor was made for like a hundred okay, million. Does, does and that, it had all this talent behind it. And it's uh, an absolute hot piece of shit. But does that still not make, shit. okay, but, and, and your point is that the speech is in counselor is pretentious and bullshitty, right? But well, this one, because it's only, because it was only I, made the, for a hundred thousand dollars. The dialogue is. Okay. The dialogue. But this one, because it's only a hundred thousand, you can't have bad. It's not bad dialogue. It's brilliant dialogue. This is like this is like off street Broadway shit. Oh my This God. is like good. This is good. <laughs> this is this is the beauty, and this is what I mean. So that's ah, you're so full of crap. It's unbelievable. I'm not saying you're not. It, I, I'm not saying you don't legitimately believe that. 
And I, I know that the counselor's speeches are pretentious, right? I know it. As I'm listening to it, I'm like, oh, my God. And I love every bit of it, just like you and okay, this one. Okay, so this, this is a heavily stylized film, right? Yeah. So I can I can accept that these characters are saying that, but when I hear like Javier Bardem and Brad Pitt and Carmen Diaz delivering the delivering this bullshit pretentious dialogue, I don't I don't oh. believe it from them. So I if don't you had mainstream actors them. in your movie, in the movie we just talked about, mainstream actors saying those words, you'd have a problem with it. But the fact that you don't it know depends, who the actors are, it depends are, on if I could divorce myself from them. Like if I could see them as a as the character and not Brad Pitt and Javier Bardem. Well, how Bardem. could you do that with like Brad? How can you separate? I mean, I don't know how you can do that. So the fact that you didn't know who these people were, you bought into their characters one hundred percent. It helps. No yes. pretension at all. That bullshit they're saying about what you just rattled off. The uh, <laughs> whatever the hell she says. Uh, yeah, the radioactive blah 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 blah. It's yeah. just as bad as a speech at the end of the counselor. When he's talking to the drug kingpin, okay, it's the same thing. It's pretentious bullshit. I agree. I and you agree, just happen I agree to like with this that, one. but right, I, do, okay. I think it's it's different. It's different. Look for you, it is. The the, de- the say, delivery method is different and more acceptable. Can I say something, please? Yes. I want to say that when it comes to grief, the normal rules of exchange do not apply because grief transcends value. A man oh, would give entire nations to lift grief <laughs> off his heart, and yet you cannot buy anything with Listen grief to those words. because Listen grief to those is words. worthless. That is hot, stupid, right. awesome. That's I awesome. love it. I'm telling like, you, that you whole thing. What are you talking about, Hefe? Right. No, that is, that's genius okay, okay, right there. Okay, no, I, I, l- let me add this. So in The Counselor, they're trying to, well, no, I don't know. They're trying to be <laughs> deep. They're trying to be deep with that, whereas this isn't deep. This is like B movie trash lock. You're so forgiving. That, that is and beautiful that's fine. in its own. It, so its you're own saying container. you're saying if they spend. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I think that they're that they're trying to. I mean, they're doing it in in a way that to some people might seem goofy, and that's fine. But I mean, they're they're trying to to look at at like real things people have powerful strong psychological experiences and feelings with things like sex and crime and family relations and stuff like that like they're they're doing something that you may or may not like or vibe with but it's all stuff that you can relate to like desire and hatred and and fear and all those things and Which I, one I, are I don't, don't want to sell just gonna short. ask the same <laughs> question are you talking about the, the an, well, probably <laughs> probably <laughs> both <laughs> probably <laughs> both but i'm actually talking about i'm actually Caligari. talking about dr caligari yeah. i i think you know you can take it seriously or not but i don't think that they i don't my i mean i could be totally wrong i don't know the people who made the movie but um i i don't think they made it just to say let's make this as crazy as possible because it's there's it's it's there's too much thought just to emulate the style of of Caligari, and like why even connect it to Caligari? Because yeah. you care about expressionism, you you feel like you're you're making a film that's conscious of history. It's ridiculous, but it's yeah. not it's not in a vacuum. Yeah, I think their motivation means probably, something. Yeah, I mean to even to even do that, to even take the Caligari aesthetic and put it on this film, says something about the filmmaker. He was exactly he, they were being thoughtful. It was thoughtful. Exactly, but again. It's not apples and oranges, okay? It's not the I, counselor I sucked is. because somebody who should know better wrote that and it cost $100 million versus $100,000. It's still, it's still pompous bullshit that they're both saying in both films. You just happen to like the aesthetic because it's cheaper and it wasn't, you know, you didn't expect it to come out of Brad Pitt's mouth, I guess, or Reuben Blades, right? I mean, well, you know, Ralph. I, I, uh, I like. The, I, I like have the you ever deliver- seen a snuff film? I li- <laughs> You know, I Ralph, like it better when life, you say it. <laughs> life is maybe life you should is being recite in, all the dialogue from the counselor, Ralph. <laughs> Ralph, life is being in bed with you. Everything else is just waiting. <laughs> there you go. That's my man. That's my man right there. <laughs> right. I love what he was doing. And there's scenes that pop up in that film. You don't know why they're happening. I mean, that's so great. It, this is what movie. I mean. I guarantee you, counselor is going to be a cult film like this one is. Counselor is going to be one of those that's going to be looked at, and maybe a Rocky Horror Picture Show type deal will come out of that one because it's I don't so think bad. That's shit. going to happen, but 
I don't know. You go with a couple of you know white leopards or whatever those cheetahs. Cheetahs. The movie. The cheetahs are heartbreaking. They're abandoned at the end in a a land that's not their own. That was upsetting. I know. That that movie is not a fun movie. Like this. This is a fun movie because of the (laughs) fun aesthetic and dialogue. That movie is not fun. It's they're trying to be deep and dark, and it comes across as false. I find the counselor so much fun. I don't get it. No, I, it's, it's just cute. because it's not supposed to be fun doesn't yeah. mean that it can't be fun. You know, I mean, I don't think Cormac McCarthy's first screenplay was supposed to be from the guy who wrote No Country for Old Men and um, uh, uh, Blood Meridian, and he was like, you know what, we're gonna do like, like, what if everybody in Full House was on crack? Kind of crazy movie. No, he's trying to do something that's profound, like his books, and uh, it didn't come out that way. Yeah. And, you know, th- the result is extremely entertaining. And if it's not entertaining in the way that it was intended, that's okay. That's yeah. cool. Well, that's D- – you're talking about Rocky Horror. You're talking about yeah, Dr. The movies Caligari. Exist. Same thing. Movies I, exist I can't and believe. audiences Although, do what they do. I think Caligari was meant to be what it is. I don't think they thought that was ever going to be mainstream. I think that was a direct-to-B movie. Yeah, I, and that's fine. And Midnight movie, think... not just B. Midnight. Midnight yeah, movie. a Midnight movie. I, I think that's fair. So. I think that's fair. And there's that's nothing not wrong with quote. that, Al. I don't judge you for that. I just judge you for not liking the council, to be honest. <laughs> that's fine. Because I don't understand me. that. I'm just glad we can I, all I can't be honest. I would I'm imagine, 100% minute, guilty. Your whole thing about I, there's things I want to see. It's when, it's when a director does something that I've never seen on screen before. I've never seen someone bonk a car before on screen. That is true. Someone as high profile as... as uh, Cameron Diaz. Carmen you Diaz. You were gonna say you were gonna say Carmen. Oh, you did say Carmen. Her name Carmen. is her name is Carmen Cameron Diego. Diaz, like Carmen, Kirk yeah. Cameron, Cameron right. Diaz. So you have never seen that before, and you're not impressed at all. I don't understand that. So that's the beauty of this. We can have. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else you you'd like go, to add? Before? Everybody should watch this movie just once in your life. Take an edible. Once. I'm not condoning drug use at all. But if you really want to enjoy this, take an edible, put the closed caption on, and go to town. You're gonna you're gonna go trippy. It's gonna be trippy, right? I mean, the closed caption alone will, Al, will Al is give so you a different level. I didn't. I don't have I the reverence for this film. <laughs> He's so upset. All right, in lieu it's of so two good. by fours tonight, we're going to do something a little different. We tried this one other time. We're going to do it again. It's called Ralph's Request R and R, little R and R. Okay. Fancy. Ralph's request is back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Given that it's March, we're taping this in March, we're recording this in March, and it's Women's History Month, I wanted to do a film, a cult film, directed by a woman. Okay? My little, my little contribution to the world. And I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen this. I don't know if you've seen it. It's called The Invitation. I have not. And you have not seen this? I have. You have seen you have, yeah. I'm I, I think if it's, you, it's, that's a really good movie. I really yeah. like that. By Karen I actually just Kusama. recommended that to somebody today. Yeah. Okay. Directed by yeah. Karen Kusama, Karen. Who, who had a couple other films, but she's gone on to direct some uh, shows from The Outsider, that HBO series, which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Halt and Catch Fire, Billions. I mean, she's a really good director. And I think this is maybe one of her third or fourth film. I don't really know. Anyway, it's a very well, her interesting- first, Her first one was- um, was Girl, Girl Fight. Fight, the movie that broke Michelle Rodriguez as right. well. I broke her out, I mean, not broke her, yeah. about yeah. A, a woman boxer. And, and then I think Karen Kusama did, did she do, was it Eon Flux? Yes. The Charlize Theron she did. crazy MTV live action yeah. sort of thing. So she definitely, you know, she's done some really nifty looking stuff. The Invitation is, uh, it's, it's a good one. It was yeah, actually, it's considered I a cult. It's considered a cult, cult film, so I thought we would... Uh, Al, you've not seen it or have seen it? I have, I have not seen this. Okay. Um, it stars my Logan Marshall Green. You know who he is? The He's Tom Hardy exactly Light. Tom Hardy. Yeah. Tom Hardy Light, yep. yeah. He was in uh, Prometheus. He played the uh, one of the, the oh. scientists that goes, uh, the, the wife or the, the guy who ends up... Well, anyway, and, if you've seen and Prometheus. He's the lead in, um, he's the lead in Upgrade. Yes. Um, and, which is mo- one of the most fun movies I've That's watched. That's a blast. A that movie's a blast. A lot of fun. A and of John Carroll Lynch is in this one, who played uh, Zodiac, basically the guy who they accused of being Zodiac in uh, yep. in Fincher's film. It's a fascinating yep. film. It's dread from beginning to end. As soon as it, it's, there's a, there's a scene where they're driving to a, in, in a canyon that just starts with dread right from 
to get. And I just, I find it, I love the film and I wanted you guys to, I want to talk about it next week. So that's why I'm bringing that Great. one to the table. And since Al hasn't seen it, that's good. So that'll be a good, we'll get some fresh eyes on that one. I'm sure it'll be garbage. <laughs> Al will hate it because <laughs> I, I can't imagine a scene in that where he goes, I've never seen that before. <laughs> it's not going to happen with this one. But it's well directed, well Is acted. Is there ni- I nihilistic think. dread? This might fit uh, into that, yeah. actually. I think that that's a that's a I potential like candidate. Then. Yeah, I think you know now that you mention it, you may actually one. you may actually love this film. <laughs> of, you go, I want to see. You'll probably it. say you'll probably say I wish it was even gooier. Right. <laughs> but um, I, I mean, I, it's it's a good film, and it's definitely up your your dark yeah. alley. Although that this sounds more like something you'd say in the the movie we just watched, <laughs> right? But 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 uh, I I think that's a great choice, Ralph. Good. So let's give that a shot, and we'll talk about it next week. All right. All right. All right. Al, I'm sorry I didn't love this film. It's all right. But now that you mentioned it, maybe I'll take a look at it again. You know, let me borrow your laser disc so I can watch it. Oh, on okay. The... I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Proper. We'll trade. We'll do a little trade. I'll give you sorority babes to play with. You let me look at that one. I'm not trading. It's not trading. Just, you know, we rent each other. So. Okay. All right. All right. Sound good? Yeah. Sure. All right, guys. Listen, have a good, safe week. We're getting, slowly, we're getting out of COVID. We may actually meet in person at some point, maybe. Uh, it's Like, I we're literally we're we'll taping meet. this. We're recording this. I hate to say taping. We're recording this a year out from when we all got shut down. So, it's sort of a milestone. Um, maybe we'll all meet at a Rocky Horror Picture screening. Oh, my God. How great would that be? <laughs> I bring the toilet paper. Al, bring the toast. Mm-hmm.